It's not just carbon that's driving climate change. So too is methane, as the world increasingly relies on meat to feed an ever-growing population. Carbon-absorbing trees are cut down for farmland, and a water crisis deepens. That leaves many concerns about sustainability globally and locally. Food has a, a water and energy footprint, and we, we like to call that an ecological footprint. And meat has a footprint that is 20 times higher than that of beans, fruits and vegetables, uh, the basic components of a vegetarian diet. Meat's footprint begins when grains are grown and transported to livestock to be eaten. Once the meat from the livestock is harvested, it must be distributed around the country and even around the world. One of the biggest impacts is water. Okay, one hamburger, depending on who you ask again, ranges anywhere from 440 gallons per hamburger of water to produce up to 800 gallons. Well, these animals are born and they need to grow and they need to sustain themselves. We need to give them water. We need to uh, water the crops that they eat. We need to hose down, you know, after slaughter. Livestock produce methane as they digest their food. Then their manure produces even more methane as it decomposes. Methane is 30 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a heat trapping gas for the planet. That means meat production contributes to climate change, which in turn, contributes to the world's ongoing water crisis. Climate change causes an increasing number of, of droughts and prolonged dry seasons. It also, during rainy seasons, creates precipitation to often come in, in more condensed bursts. These bursts make it more difficult for the land to absorb water. Water is also absorbed less by land that is deforested. 40% of the world's land mass is occupied by livestock production. When forests are cut down to make room for animals, it's a triple whammy. Greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere, there are less plants to take in carbon dioxide, and now animal production will increase the carbon footprint. On the University of Miami campus in Coral Gables, they're trying to address this at the grassroots level. So my role at the U is really to um, uh, promote, create, initiate a project that are going to ha have a, a better impact on the environment. Since 2007, the University of Miami has pledged to reduce its carbon footprint. That means buildings that are LEED certified and reduced emissions, energy, water and waste. But it also means educating students on their food choices. So trying to eat locally is definitely a way to lower the carbon footprint involved in those products that you eat. The reason is simple, is if we farm and we grow food next to where we live, it's going to lower the carbon footprint. It's pretty simple to understand. The university buys local in-season food from distributors as much as possible and even has its own sustainable garden that will eventually serve students. It's not just about where the food is grown, but what type of food is available. When we promote uh, dishes, we try to focus on the, the plant-based uh, options. Plant-based options, otherwise known as vegan options, have proven health benefits, but veganism at its core is about animal ethics. I knew nothing about environmental issues until I became vegan. The movement brought me to climate and environmental uh, understandings of what's happening in the world that I wasn't aware of before. And to those who say we need to eat meat to get enough protein? We're basically um, getting the nutrients from the earth that we need to sustain ourselves through the animals, okay? So they're the middleman. We can go straight to the protein, straight to the nutrients. The message to get out to people is not necessarily everybody needs to become a vegetarian or a vegan overnight, um, but that small changes in the diet, like doing a Meatless Mondays program or just swapping out some beef for, for chicken, pork, turkey, fish, things like that can actually make a, a measurable uh, contribution to reducing emissions. Foods that are produced locally, like at UM, also cut down on air and car miles, which in turn cuts down on emissions. Now, for those of you thinking of adding vegan meals to your diet but not sure where to start, head over to my Facebook page, Steve Mac NBC 6 I've posted a few of my favorite spots around South Florida.